Excel is pretty much irredeemable, going to great lengths to show he was the perfect being, and doing terrible things as a result. But like any good anime villain, he has a few good traits. Sort of. A better way to put it is that Cell has some moments and personality traits that show he can be a decent dude if he wants to be. So let's take a look at some of Cell's more chill moments, even if there aren't a, a whole lot of them. Polite demeanor. Cell's personality is somewhat unique. Well, maybe that's not the right word, since it's mostly made up of the personality traits of various warriors. As many know, Cell's name comes from the fact that he's made up of the cells of some of the universe's greatest warriors, including Goku, Frieza, Piccolo, and Vegeta. This resulted in Cell having the combined power and then some of each of the warriors that went into his creation. It also gave him the personality traits of these warriors. Cell still has his own personality, but the traits of other characters can be seen in his behavior. For example, his desire to fight strong opponents is derived from Goku and Vegeta's say in biology. His intelligence and strategic mind can be seen as a trait of Piccolo's, and his polite demeanor likely comes from Frieza. Now, it'd be the stretchiest of stretches to say that Frieza is anywhere near the realm of nice, chill, or otherwise good and pure. But he's nothing if not polite and formal in his mannerisms and speech. Cell inherited this polite demeanor from Frieza via his DNA. But, uh, we're, n we're not sure if that's how it works. And we don't have time in this video to debate the old nature versus nurture argument. Regardless, Cell's somewhat polite in both his formality and in the honorable way he conducts a battle, at least for the most part. Where some of Cell's traits came and went with his transformations, his politeness stayed throughout each of his evolutions, meaning it's actually one of his strongest traits. This formal demeanor has not only given Cell some chill moments throughout his saga, but it also means he knows how to act more civilized than Goku, despite only being alive for so long. Although Cell's polite nature shouldn't be mistaken for actually being nice, it's still worth noting that he's not an animal. He's not a ball of fury ready to battle anything and everything that moves. Nope, that honor belongs to the likes of Super Boo and Kid Boo. Cell's much more dignified. Instead of wanting to rule or destroy the world or even just cause destruction, Cell simply wanted to test his abilities to show that he was the perfect being with no equal. And since this was his only goal once obtaining perfection, he had no reason to be a savage about it. Nope, instead, Cell set up an entire event with rules and regulations, which we'll get to in a minute. Cell's civilized approach to fighting is worth noting as being one of the villain's redeeming qualities. Even if his complicated personality leads him to shift from his polite nature to complete psychosis, Cell at least manages to act nice most of the time. The Cell Games one of the best examples of the relatively civilized way in which Cell conducts himself is the Cell Games. The very concept of the Cell Games is itself a much better approach to fighting than how Frieza or Boo dealt with the Z Fighters. Instead of just wanting to fight and doing so, Cell set up a tournament similar to the World Martial Arts Tournament, with rules, regulations, and most importantly, time to prepare for it. This aspect of the Cell Games truly showed that Cell wasn't some impulsive, battle-hungry madman. He was a martial artist, one who truly wanted wanted to test his limits and see how powerful he was. Specifically, the fact that he allowed the Warriors of Earth 10 days to train for the tournament showed that he wasn't some power-mad psycho. Although the 10 days of training he allowed his potential opponents ended up being his downfall, since the Warriors of Earth were able to turn a day into a year thanks to the hyperbolic time chamber, the gesture was meaningful, if only to show that Cell wasn't exactly a bad guy, just an arrogant warrior looking to prove his strength. This aspect of the Cell games is very important, as giving Warriors time time to prepare, as well as making an event out of the fight rather than springing it on Earth at random, showed Cell was a pretty decent and possibly a pretty chill opponent rather than just some soulless monster. But he's a completely artificial being, so maybe he doesn't have a soul. And no, his appearances in Hell aren't canon, so don't try to counter us with those examples. The formality of the Cell game showed Cell's more dignified side, even if the entire tournament was also a threat to the world. But there's more in the Cell games that showed Cell was a more chill villain than Frieza or Vegeta. For example, he allowed a newscaster and cameraman to be at the tournament. Perhaps this was part of his ego and arrogance and that he wanted to be televised, but the fact that he didn't destroy Mr. Satan's news crew is worth noting, even though their equipment did get destroyed later on. However, that didn't stop the news announcer, since he went on to speak into a stick while he couldn't see the fight. Oh boy. 
He's not right in the head now, is he? Finally, these Cell games had a proper arena with rules and regulations that showed Cell wanted a proper martial artist tournament. The rules were simple, and Cell might have blown up the ring halfway through, but the fact that he established any rules instead of just going at it proved that Cell was a bit more chill than some other Dragon Ball villains. Putting up with Mr. Satan. There was one more thing that occurred at the Cell games that proved Cell wasn't as bad of a guy as he seemed the way he dealt with Mr. Satan and his pupils. Cell wasn't a good guy by any means in the first rounds of the Cell games, if you could even call them that, but he could have done much, much worse to the people that first stepped into the ring. Of course, we're talking about Karoni and Piroshki, Mr. Satan's pupils who stepped in to challenge Cell as his first opponents. These two were nothing more than plain old, if not a bit eccentric, martial artists, and because of how highly they thought of themselves, Cell had every reason to just obliterate them from the ring and show off to the cameras how powerful he really was. But he didn't. Instead, he just stood there and let his energy do the talking. By which we mean the energy that Cell was exuding was enough to push back these weaklings, both pupils being blown out of the ring just because Cell's energy was so freaking strong. But Cell didn't just kill them like Frieza or Boo would have done. Instead, he just made examples out of them, which didn't actually work to deter Mr. Satan from eventually stepping into the ring himself. Yet, even though Mr. Satan was far more annoying than his pupils, Cell actually let him do his theatrics. It's hard to believe when we think about it. Here's this eccentric, crowd-pleasing dingus who's told the strongest android ever created that he'd beat him up like he beat up a pile of concrete tiles. And Cell didn't just end him on the spot. Instead, he stood there as Mr. Satan attempted to attack him, kicking and punching without dealing any damage. Mr. Satan's punches would have ticked off the likes of Frieza enough to take him out, but Cell kept his composure and acted rather civilized throughout the whole thing. Hacky didn't even have a problem with the news team claiming that every one of Mr. Satan's Satan's attacks were successful, effective, and powerful, all of which were <laughs> untrue. Of course, Cell eventually had enough and just straight up slapped Mr. Satan into the cliffside, but still, he kept cool for a while. It was a baller move on Cell's part, but even then, he didn't kill Mr. Satan. He just dealt with him in a quick, decisive way. It might have been because he saw Mr. Satan and his pupils beneath him as not worthy of his power, but it's worth some good guy points that Cell didn't just straight up end the lives of all three of them. Educating Trunks We've covered this subject a few times already, but let's take another look at it from a different perspective. Of course, we're talking about Super Saiyan 3rd Grade, a form beyond Super Saiyan that both Goku and Trunks achieved. Despite sounding much more powerful than a regular Super Saiyan, the form was actually incredibly weak. The reason being that by increasing muscle mass, the user's body became weighed down too much. And even though their strength is greatly increased, they become too slow to actually utilize it. Goku first happened upon this form while training with Gohan in the hyperbolic time chamber, showing its great strength but choosing not to use it because of its major flaw. Instead, he chose to advance his normal Super Saiyan form, to push it to its full power and forget about Super Saiyan 3rd grade. Unfortunately, Trunks didn't catch on to the disadvantages of this form right away. Like Goku, Trunks achieved this form while training in the hyperbolic time chamber, but he kept it secret because he believed it to be the next level beyond Vegeta's Super Vegeta form, which was just Super Saiyan 2nd grade. Because Trunks didn't want to wound his father's pride, he didn't break it out until it became necessary in his fight against Cell. After Cell achieved his perfect form, Trunks decided he needed to bring out the big guns, by which we mean his, his muscles. By unleashing his Super Saiyan 3rd grade form, Trunks was able to get close to Cell's strength. But for a reason he didn't understand at first, he couldn't keep up with him. So what does all of this have to do with Cell being a nice guy? Well, he was actually the one who revealed the downside of the Super Saiyan 3rd grade form to Trunks. It turns out that Vegeta already knew of the disadvantages of the form, and like Goku, opted not to use it in battle. A fact that he was quick to point out after Cell explained to Trunks how inflating his muscles ended up costing him speed and maneuverability in favor of strength. Cell demonstrated this in full, to show Trunks point by point why Super Saiyan 3rd grade was a waste of his power, and even though it was meant as a means of shaming and humiliating Trunks, the fact that Trunks wouldn't have heard it from Vegeta or anyone else makes Cell kind of a nice guy for explaining it. Again, it was meant to humiliate him, but the fact that he even took the time to stop the fight and demonstrate why his opponent wasn't fighting at their best showed that he has at least some honor in a fight. 
Bearing Goku Way back in Dragon Ball, Goku was a bit more relaxed when it came to taking lives, as seen in the, in the uh, Red Ribbon Army saga. Ooh boy. As Goku sought to stop the Red Ribbon Army and get the Dragon Balls, he pretty much annihilated the entire evil organization, leaving destruction and a huge amount of bodies in his wake. As a result of the devastation that Goku unleashed upon the Red Ribbon Army, Dr. Shiro went about creating androids that were programmed with the mission of defeating Goku for good. This resulted in Android 17, 18, and 19, all of whom were made with the goal of ending Goku's life. Android 19 was destroyed, and Android 17 and 18 eventually became good guys. So, Dr. Zero's plans of defeating Goku didn't come to fruition with his numbered androids. But Android 17 and 18 still act cold and annoyed at Goku since their programming tells them to hate his guts. But Dr. Zero had a backup plan. Cell. Although the bio android wouldn't be ready for a few more years, he eventually found his way to Goku's time via Trunks' time machine. And like Android 17, 18, and 19, he was programmed to absolutely hate Goku. Sort of. Like the androids he had to absorb to become perfect, Cell pretty much abandoned his mission of killing Goku. Yeah, you know it. Despite being a monster made with the sole purpose of destroying Son Goku, he didn't really care to do it by the time he achieved perfection. Instead, he just wanted to prove and test his power, which did result in him facing Goku in the Cell games. But it wasn't for the purpose of taking him out. He just wanted to prove that he was stronger. It's a little complicated, but the point is that Cell decided not to complete his mission and end Goku. Goku's life. He did eventually end up defeating him when he acted like a sore loser and tried to blow himself up, resulting in Goku taking the full brunt of his explosion. Also, sorry King Kai. Cell has done a lot of terrible things in his life, like sucking the life force out of the residents of Ginger Town and attempting to destroy the Earth. And there's not really much he could do to redeem himself, but it's still worth noting that Cell didn't plan on killing Goku, despite it being the literal purpose for his existence. Sure, he did end up taking him out, but he didn't set out to do so, just to prove his power. All of which we think earns him a few good boy points. Or at the very least, he's earned the right to be called chill in a few instances. All that said, uh, you know, he's also a literal and figurative monster who 100% deserved to be obliterated by Gohan. Man, that was great. Those are some of Cell's more chill moments, even if they weren't enough to redeem him. Which one of these was your favorite? Do you want us to do similar videos for other anime villains? Let us know in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more Dragon Ball videos. Thanks for watching.